Good afternoon, children. Welcome once again to the video classes presented to you by Sri Vidya Mandir Matriculation Higher Secondary School, Othangarai. Children, today we are going to look into the lesson, lesson number three, Empowered Woman Navigating the World. This is an interesting lesson which highlights the real potential hidden inside a woman when they are empowered. Now, gone are the days where women once upon a time they used to remain inside their homes, confined inside the comforts of their homes, either due to apprehension or restriction. They never came out in the society freely in public. But today, the times have changed. Women are boldly seen taking active part in all walks of life in the society. They almost occupy the top, almost all the top positions in the society. Today, they are moving freely when compared to the world of this. They have achieved tremendous accomplishments in several fields. One such achievement is the achievement of the all women Indian Navy crew having circumnavigated around the world for 254 days in an indigenously built Indian ship named Tarini, INSV Tarini. Now INSV, what does this stand for? INSV stands for Indian Naval Ship Vessel. Indian Naval Ship Vessel. This was named Tarini. Tarini is the, is the patron deity for sailors and she is worshipped by the seamen for their safety and success at sea. It was named aptly Tarini. It was the second sailboat inducted into the Indian Navy. The first being Mahadevi. The first being Mahadevi. The first sailboat that was inducted in the army was Mahadi. Tarni is the second sailboat that was inducted into the Indian Army on 18th February 2017 after conducting several extensive sea trials. It was built by indigenously built at Goa in a shipyard, MS Aquarius located at Goa. And it was named Tarani after the famous Taratarani temple situated in Ganjam district of Orissa. Tarani means boat. In Sanskrit it means savior. This Tarani was a 55 foot sailing vessel which was indigenously built in India and used for circumnavigating around the world. This Tarani had a special advanced raymarine navigation suit along with an array of satellite communication systems which could help in perfect and precise navigation anywhere around the world. Now, let us move ahead with Navasagar Parikrama. Navasagar Parikrama. This Navasagar Parikrama is a project undertaken in consonance with the national policy to empower women to attain their real potential. According to Sunil Lamba, the chief of the naval staff, he considered that project essential for promoting ocean sailing activities in the Navy and also for depicting the government of India's trust for Nari Shakti. Nari Shakti means the power of women, women power. It wanted to depict the trust, Indian government's trust for Nari Shakti. This was the opinion of the Chief of the Naval Staff, Sunil Lamba. 
this tarity this voyage was not it was undergone in order to showcase to the entire world the made in india initiative to voice that initiative made in india initiative for sailing by sailing on board an indigenously built ship the ship called the tarini which had special features this it had special features that uh, encourage the use of non conventional energy resources such as the wind it also collected and updated meteorological ocean and wave data on a regular basis for accurate and precise weather prediction to be made by the imd that is the indian meteorological department it also collected data for monitoring marine pollution on high seas these are the special features of tarani the special features namely it encourages the use of environment friendly non conventional energy resources such as the wind it was environment friendly further it collected and updated the data on ocean and wave in order to forecast the weather precisely it also collected the data for monitoring the pollution marine pollution on high seas for monitoring the marine pollution on high seas these are the special some of the special features of this indian port tari now moving further let us talk about the crew the all indian women crew all indian navy women crew who circumnavigated the world for 254 days the crew the crew comprised of six members six members captained by skippered by vartika joshi flight commander vartika joshi her companion skilings the crew members for pratip jamwal another flight commander to a swati patrapalli another flight commander then we had aishwarya bodapati vijaya devi and payal gupta who were all lieutenants this was the brave women crew that navigated around the world this six member crew they began their journey around the world on september 10 2017 they were supposed to re return to that same place they started from goa they were flagged off by the defense minister of india it It was a historic day in the annals of uh, Indian as well as global navigation. They were flagged off by the Defence Minister of India, and they were supposed to return to Goa in the month of April 2018. But in fact, they returned only on the May 21st of 2018 after circumnavigating around the world for 254 days. It was planned that uh, that expedition will cons consist of five legs with four stopovers four stopovers at australia new zealand falkland and cape town south africa australia fremantle port and at new zealand it was supposed to stop at the littleton port port stanley at falklands and Cape Town port at South Africa. They were supposed to stop in these places ports for replenishment, replenishment of fuel, fuel, rice, food, fuel, and repair works to carry out repair works. Children, as we go through, let us also know a few additional things. The first Indian solo circumnavigation was done by Captain Dilip Dondi. Solo circumnavigation was done by Dilip Captain Dilip Dondi from August 19, 2009 to May 19, 2009.
and the first non-stop circumnavigation was carried out by Captain Atlas Tommy Casey. It was done on November 1, 2012 to March 31, 2013. Now, these women, this crew circumnavigated bravely around the world, causing history, and they broke many stereotypes during their record-setting sail. After that successful completion, they were interviewed, and in that interview, which forms a part of our lesson. they clearly express their personal experiences their difficulties the obstacles they had to confront the unpredictable challenges that they see through at them and how they were able to handle those critical situations their aims their motivation and the message to the entire women kind can be easily understood as we go through the lesson now let us go through the glossary the some of the difficult words that you may encounter while reading circumnavigate circumnavigate means traveling around all the way around something especially the earth columbus circumnavigated around the world indigenously indigenously means locally natively naturally inherently innately these are the different synonyms you can use for indigenously consonance consonance is in agreement with the compatibility between opinions compatibility agreement so naturally the opposite will be disagreement skipper skipper means to act as a captain to act as a master of a vessel to captain the expedition expedition is a journey made for a specific purpose whether it is a war or an exploration whatever it is it is a journey made with a specific for a specific purpose a voyage for a specific purpose replenishment 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 means restoring refilling restoring of something to a former level or condition restoring apprehensive apprehensive is anxious anxious being anxious or fearful fear fearful of something bad or unpleasant is going to happen contention contention is struggling together in opposition a strenuous effort fighting together in opposition struggling together wrestled up wrestled up is a new word which means preparing quickly essential essential is necessary important acquainted acquainted is familiarized to make something familiar familiar familiarize auxiliary auxiliary means used as a substitute in case of need a reserve a substitute something additional additional anticipate anticipate is to foresee something is to expect something bioluminescence bioluminescence is the production of light by living organisms production of light by living organisms organisms is called bioluminescence coal gopas coal gopas is nothing but the pani puri that we eat the pani puri is other is called as coal gopas morale morale is the mental condition or the confidence the confidence mental condition with respect to confidence normally during times of adversity during difficult times the confidence blissful blissful means joyful 
pleasant, joyful, commissioned, commissioned is ordered to given authority, ordered or given authority, craft work, craft work is decorative arrangement, taking paper, glass or something and making arrangement, decorative arrangements, craft work, quilling is also a type of craft work. Encountered is faced, something faced unexpectedly, encountered, coming across something. These are some of the difficult words that we would see in this lesson. Now, we have seen the introduction, we have seen what is INSV Tharni is, we have seen the special features of Tharni, how it was built and what its special feature is, we have seen something about the Navasagar Parikrama and then we have seen the details of the six women crew who circumnavigated the, around the world. Now after that completion they are being interviewed and how in that interview they come up with answers that explains their difficulties and hardships can be seen now further. The first question in the interview that they were asked, that Vartika Joshi, the captain was asked, was how well they were acquainted with the sailing and sailboat. How well they were acquainted with that sail. Vartika Joshi replied that they had no acquaintance with any sailing boat activity or any ocean sailing boat. In fact, to women, officers were denied entry into combat platforms. So they had no acquaintance at all. It was very difficult for them to take the boat out into the sea and then move, sail from one place to another. It was very difficult for them in the beginning. But slowly they picked up and built upon and built upon through Arduous training for three years. They trained for three years and slowly learned how to sail. They got acquainted with the sail boat. This was the reply given by Vartika Joshi. And then they were secondly asked about the training process that they had undergone. To this question, Vartika Joshi, she came out that with the answer that they were given some theoretical classes, theoretical classes in navigation, communication and weather prediction. She said that theoretical classes are quite different from sailing outside, from practical classes. So they were given hands-on training classes how to repair things when they go wrong how to fix them, how to act during times of medical emergencies, how to act during emergencies that arise when the weather gets tough and even some tactical aspects. In some tactical aspects also they were given some training. This was the answer given by Vartika Joshi. Aishwarya Pottapati, she also joined that conversation and she said that they were given some basic training, some basic training programs at the INWTC at Mumbai. INWTC stands for the Indian Naval Waterman, Watermanship Training Center situated at Mumbai and also at various other centers in the southern naval place at Kochi. She said that they were given sailing practice. They were asked to sail in that old Indian first boat, sailboat Mahadev to Mauritius and then come back. They were also asked to sail up to Cape Town 
and come back in 2016 and 17. As that boat was old and had minor locks and repairs, leaks and repairs, they were taught how to counter that and how to repair that, the repair works. They were taught about that. She said, I should have said that uh, it was a tutorial for them and they learned how to manage, to manage water, food and electricity during that voyage. This was the training that they had undergone. Now moving further, the next question was about the selection process. How they were selected? Aishwarya immediately replied that out of the 30 women who had applied for that expedition, only six of them were shortlisted. Only these six of them were shortlisted based on the little survival skills that they showcased or displayed. Captain Dilip Tonde was their mentor. Initially, after hearing the flare-ups at sea, Aishwarya got frightened had, and had second thoughts of joining the team. She wanted to quit, but luckily, she did not do so. She joined the team. This was regarding the selection process. The next question was uh, how the family reacted to their selection on that expedition. Patika Joshi, she answered that the family at first felt it very difficult to digest. They did not know what to say. They were men mostly from, all of them were mostly from the mountainous areas, mountainous regions. They had not even seen the sea or ocean. Their parents had seen the sea for the first time only when they were invited by the crew members. Initially, they were very apprehensive. But as they saw their children sailing well, doing well, and looking after themselves in a nice way, they became supportive. Even though they were apprehensive, they were supportive. That was the answer given by Vartika Joshi. The family report reacted in a positive way. They supported their children joining that expedition. The next question that was thrown at them was about the aims they had during that expedition and the ways of fulfilling that aims. Vartika Joshi, she replied that their only aim was to work hard with ultimate honesty, to carry out the expectation with ultimate honesty by following the rules of navigation such as not to use any auxiliary means of repulsion and not to take anyone anyone else's assistance. They wanted to deal it with ultimate honesty. That is what their aim was. The destination was not important for them. The journey mattered the most to them. That was the aim that she had stated. Moving further. The next question that they were asked was about that one quality which helped them to complete that expedition successfully. Patiya Joshi immediately said, honesty. Honesty was the one quality that helped them to achieve that expedition successfully. She said that they were ultimate. She made sure that they were honest. While, travel, while, while, while sailing, suddenly the winds decreased and the boat would have stopped. During such times, Without hesitating, they used to previously switch on the engine and move forward and then stop the engine when the winds picked up. But here, as they wanted to be very honest in their expedition, they never switched the engine on at any part of the 
expedition. They were very honest. That was the one quality which helped them to achieve that expedition successfully. Honesty. For that. Patika Joshi was thrown the question as uh, how she had involved uh, the team members as a team, as the head of the group, as the captain of the group, how she was able to combine them, make them gel together. Patika Joshi replied that everything was done in collaboration. With There was collaboration and teamwork. Every, every individual had the same amount of training and same amount of sailing. So it was very easy for them to collaborate. Whenever a problem arose, each one came out with an individual way of solving, their own way of solving a problem. And so they were left with different ways of solving a problem. They had many ways to find a solution to a problem. This helped them a lot. They used to sit together, discuss and choose the best choice. The best option was chosen to solve that problem. So, they worked in collaboration. In between this, Payal added that teamwork is the most important thing that is very essential, very much required during times of crisis. Payal said, the teamwork was very important for one to succeed during a critical situation, during a storm that they had to undergo. Even during that violent storm, three people would sit outside watching, whereas three people inside will not be resting. In fact, they will be helping them by heating the water and the gloves to protect them from the numbness that may arise due to the cold, severe cold as well as for that incessant rain that was falling. So they would always be active inside also helping. That was the way they reacted. I said that teamwork helped them to overcome the 20 hour struggle they had to face during the storm. It was a 20-hour struggle to overcome the challenge thrown by the sea storm that they had to encounter during the voyage. Next, they were thrown the question, what was the most challenging task that they had encountered? The most challenging task. The most challenging task that they had encountered, according to Vartika Joshi, was the way they handled they handled the storm. During the storm, the sea becomes very rough and tough. It will be very difficult to handle. The sea will rise from 9 to 10 feet. The wind speed will pick up abruptly. What looks the wind speed, what looks normal on sea will be a hurricane on land. And during storms, it will pick up very great speeds. It was very difficult for them to encounter that. Apt teamwork, that hard work, helped them to overcome that challenge. They recall that it was a blissful experience, a joyful experience as to the ways how they were used, how they used to fix things that broke during this time through hard work. That team spirit helped them, gave them the energy to move forward. So that was the way the hand, the most challenging task. That was the most challenging task facing this town. How adventurous? The next question that was thrown at them was how adventurous was that job? They. Vartika Joshi replied that uh, while crossing the Tasman Sea, they were fortunate enough to witness the brilliant lights, the brilliant southern lights. 
it was very rare in those months to be see the satellites but they were fortunate to see that from the sea itself it was very awesome they were awestruck they were awestruck to see the entire sky lit up in green light there was bioluminescence dolphins swam beside them as neighbors and a variety of sea creatures uh, were moving around them in fact they had spotted a dead sperm whale far away at first they thought it was an island and later they came to know that it was a dead whale whatever new species they came across even though they did not know anything about it they were not specialists they did not know anything about these species in the sea whatever new things that they came across they immediately googled and found out to learn about the species with eagerness so adventurous was their expedition the next question that was thrown to them was how they had spent their time during the voyage swati patrapalli replied that they spent their time cooking baking and doing craft work she stated that they read books when the weather was pleasant in fact she had made lamp shades as craft work and she also loved cooking so much that she prepared the best dishes possible for the crew by her with the limited resources that they had in their pantry vartika joshi she read comics and ramayana she watched movies she listened to the music and she also enjoyed and joined in the preparation of parathas rasgullas halwas cakes bread etc they celebrated festivals especially diwali at sea they celebrated diwali at sea they also celebrated three birthdays the first birthday of the ship that they sail was also celebrated they also celebrated specific occasions like crossing the equator or crossing the international date line this was how they spent their entire time in amusing themselves the next question that was thrown to them was what motivated them the most what motivated them swati gatrapalli replied that uh, they knew that the entire nation was watching them and praying for them encouraging them for the successful completion at any stage they did not want the entire nation to know how frightened they were so what motivated them was to keep in mind that they should never let their fear be known by the entire nation whatever the troubles they were facing should not be made known to the nation as the expedition they knew that the expedition would be completed successfully and later they could explain to the people all the difficulties but not at that time they did not want to frighten the people of the nation they were very apt they were very very they were very very <coughs> precise in their motive that they should not frighten the entire nation with their fears finally when they were put the question how did they consider that expedition that is what is the message they wanted to give vartika joshi replied that it was a great honor a matter of fact honor and pride for having represented the country 
Indian Navy. Being an all Indian woman, it was an honor and pride for them. It was a boost to all the women of the country. She said that she looked at them as sailors. She did not look at them as women. She does not distinguish between genders, whether it is male or female, they are mere sailors. So, as a sailor, gender is, does not play a role in sailing. Their ability plays. The ability as a sailor plays. So, it was a credit to the womankind that these women sailed safely and successfully around the world for around 254 days. Patika Joshi says that it is very, 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 they are very obliged for having been given, interested such a daunting task, for having undergone such a challenging task, will act as a boost to the moral, to all the country women, to take up more challenging activities like sailing. She believed that their expedition will act as a boost to all the womankind to take up challenging tasks like sailing. Thus finishes this lesson. Through this lesson, we come to know the various difficulties that these women crew had to face, they had to confront the challenges, the unpredicted challenges thrown to them by the sea, how they coped with them, how they were able to withstand the difficult situations, critical situations aptly, and how they successfully completed the mission. I hope you have understood the lesson clearly, and so you may also be able to answer all the short answer as well as the paragraph questions that are thrown to you by the questioner. I hope you have understood the lesson well and to perform well in the test form. Goodbye until we meet further. Thank you.